Welcome back, my friends. I don't have any good uh, good foreign languages for you all today, but I do have this hat. And uh, this hat is uh, really, really big, and it's really uncomfortable. And I'd like to give respect to anybody who can wear a cowboy hat for long periods of time, because that is not me. We are joined back with our friend, LDF. Say, Wagwan boys, LDF. Wagwan. <laughs> What's going that? on? <laughs> little Toronto lingo in there, a little, little patois. I like it. I like it. Um, so today we're back uh, with a episode we've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, kind of got caught up in life and meta gaming and such stuff like that. So we're going to be going over the five best TCG formats of all time, uh, to our opinion. Uh, there's been a lot of discourse about this recently, and, and I know there's a huge tournament last weekend. Uh, kind of debuting the idea of... Uh, Having a couple a couple different resources in the in the community to introduce people to old decks and kind of hold your hand as you maybe explore older formats. So that's what we aim to do today. Kind of introduce you, um, take you through our favorite formats, and kind of see where it goes from there. Um, so, Kieran, we can start with you. You're the uh, you're the old format junkie. How okay. excited are you to make this video? No, I'm really mm -hmm. excited. That uh, should be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, this is our opinion. Uh, I haven't played every single retro format, especially some of the Neo ones, but I've played almost every retro format. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about some of my favorites, some of my favorite decks, uh, formats, and just like, yeah, introduce you guys to some really cool, cool decks and kind of show you what the game used to be like. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're yeah, I was. Uh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say because when we were coming up with the list and stuff, and I was like thinking back to like old formats, it was kind of like nostalgic, you know. It's just crazy mm -hmm. to think how old some of these formats actually are now, too. This is the first uh, video where we can quantify our impact based on something other than views. We're going to be checking TCG players to see the price of, like, Celio's Network and, like, Cessation Crystal and, like, all these old cards. I don't think we have that kind of motion, bro. It's not going to move. <laughs> no. It's not going to move. And I'm so excited just to watch it not move. And if it goes up by a cent, I'm going to throw a party. It'll be um, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's get into it here. Um, we have a, a long video in front of us, so I want to get into it as fast as possible. Um, so we made our own top five lists. Um, we conglomerated them together to one we agreed on, and surprisingly, we actually agreed quite well compared to previous iterations of our top ten. So uh, we agreed quite well. We're going to start with our honorable mentions, and we're kind of going to go through, take, uh, show you some key cards. Uh, we're going to put it on the screen, some key cards, some maybe interesting strategies, some interesting facts about the format. And if you want to find out anything about the formats, we're going to link a bunch of stuff in the in the description for you to find lists and, and build out your decks and stuff like that. So um, our first honorable mention is actually very interesting. So we're starting right from the top. So our first honorable mention is base set to fossil. Um, Matt, I, I don't know how much you've played this format. I played it a little bit and I hated it, but <laughs> I mean, it's iconic. It's there. So Karen, why don't you lead us in with this one? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't like this format. I think a lot of you guys, if you try this, you won't like this format. It's very grindy and slow. Uh, I just think it's like so iconic. I felt like I had to include like a base set format, and this is probably the yeah. most iconic one. Um, so the way base the fossil kind of is is that uh, there's not a lot of one shots. Like it's very item heavy. The items are very broken. Like there's crushing yeah. hammer without a flip. <laughs> there's like bosses orders on an item. There's just research on an item. So uh, the thing that I think is really cool about base the fossil is it's very resource intense, like intensive, like management intensive. So a lot of games like you're actually gonna like deck out your opponent. Just because you have cards like energy removal, which is just remove an energy. There's super energy removal where it's like you get rid of an energy, your opponent gets rid of two. So um, there's tons of ways to have prolonged games in this format, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, and I think one card that makes base the fossil better than just playing base is playing the Mewtwo promo. Uh, so the Mewtwo promo has attack is literally just put two energy from your discard onto Mewtwo, which just seems like a horrible attack in by modern standards. But back then, when you had all these cards that like discard energies and all the resources. Uh, that's actually really solid. Um, so if you want to kind of get a lens back to what Pokemon was like in its early days, like uh, like these cards came out like the year I was born, so like I always enjoy playing it, um, I would definitely give it a look. And, and one thing, not just for this format, but for every format we talk about, is like you don't have to play like the tier one decks against each other. Like you, if you don't want to play decks that play a bunch of like energy removal, like you can just play like the stage two decks against each other uh, and just make the format more enjoyable. So um, yeah, I ranted for a bit. Neil, do you have thoughts? Then I'll give some of my favorite decks from the format. Yeah, um, I, I I agree with you in that sense. I think you have to prioritize what you enjoy playing in each format. Like there there have been a lot of formats here where like I'm looking at this list and I've gone through and I've played some of these formats with the tier one decks and I completely completely hated it. So there are formats where you're gonna have to prioritize what you enjoy. Like for example, Karen likes to play his uh, Fly on Torterra deck a lot in 2010, which is now a very tier one deck, but at a at a point in time it, it definitely was not. So 
um, it's cool how these metas keep evolving too. And as more of you kind of get involved, you might see a, a, a constant evolution uh, of these metas. So we have all the uh, all the stuff you're going to need in the description. Go take a look. Go build these decks. Try it with your friends. Proxy them. There's a lot of online solutions now as well. But um, as far as base to base to fossil goes, we've talked about it before on the pod. It's it's more about not decking yourself out than it is anything else really you have a lot yeah. of uh, a lot of burnable cards tearing through your deck it's like playing ancient box just on yeah. a lot of uh yeah yeah it's, uh, it's pretty fast <laughs> yeah i i never played uh the base set format that much but when when you do look at it it is like arguably maybe not the most iconic format in the tcg but it is a very iconic format at that though it's definitely a format a lot of people remember um, there's iconic decks, like, obviously, Haymaker being a big one. And like you said, there are these super broken cards, like Gust on an item, Crushing Hammer without a coin flip, a double Crushing Hammer effect. Uh, you know, there wasn't a supporter back then, so you could just draw through your deck. It definitely, it's it was a different game, almost, in all, in all fairness. So, it yeah. definitely is a format that I think, if you haven't played before, definitely try it out. Yeah, I think just to show how slow it is, like, uh, like Kangas mm -hmm. Kong is, like, a key support Pokemon, and its attack is literally just draw a card for one. Like, that is just like, a good mm -hmm. support, so. Yeah. Um, like, Matalutu Haymaker is probably the most iconic deck of the format. Uh, I don't actually know if it's the best uh, of the format. I think, looking back now, the best deck is probably a, it's a Wigglytuff deck with, like, Magmar. Um, that's probably the best, because Wigglytuff hits the hardest when you play cards like Plus Power. You can, you can one-shot things. That's probably the best deck. Haymaker is still pretty good. Uh, there's an Arcanine deck that's super aggressive that is also really good. Um, you kind of look to like play. There's a Psyduck that like item locks, and then like you play this card called Last that like makes your both people discard all the items. Uh, so you like item lock and then get them discarded. But if I talk about fun decks, like my favorite decks when I play this format, I really love the Alakazam deck. Um, so Alakazam's ability is that you can move all the damage counters on your side of the board uh, around. So you kind of just like tank, and then there's a card called Pokemon Center. Uh, and it sounds crazy, but it's remove all damage counters from all of your Pokemon. Uh, and you have to discard the energies attached to them. So what you can do is you can just play, like, big HP Pokemon and, like, put the damage on them and heal them, which is really awesome. Uh, and then there's, like, a Mr. Mime that, um, what's it called? It has an ability that if your opponent does 30 more damage, like, you negate it. So it's really cool. That deck's really cool. I really like Blastoise. Like the truth. It's like the truth. It reminds me of the truth. We've talked about the truth yeah. on this uh, podcast before. That's a really fun deck. Uh, I like Blastoise. It's kind of like Chem Pow now. Like Blastoise just has the ability like put as many water in as you like. You actually attack with Blastoise because it's a BT guy. That's good. Uh, then there's a Venusaur deck that has uh, Venusaur has energy transfer, where it's like move the energy around as much as you want, and it uses Pokemon Center like the Alkazam deck. Uh, and I think energy transfer or like shift gear is my favorite ability of all hey. time. So mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoyed that deck. So yeah, this is a cool format. Uh, if you want to look at playing like back to the early stage of the game, like definitely check this one out. And decently cheap at that as well. It's not like, yeah, it's crazy, not crazy, crazy expensive. Uh, yeah, if you there buy are like, some formats we're going to cover here that are very, very expensive. Yeah, if you buy like yeah. base set two versions of cards, you can buy them like in bad condition because you're going to play with them. Like, it, and you can even use mm -hmm. some like evolution cards and all that. So, not too bad. And like I'll say this too is like an intro to building old formats. Like I actually find the most fun part of building old formats is sourcing all the cards. Mm -hmm. Like it's mm -hmm. it's really really fun. Uh, just like yep. scouring Facebook, looking at all these sites, and like making the decks sometimes is more fun than actually playing the deck. So like I do encourage you to try making the deck, especially if you have a bit of uh, extra cash sitting there. You want to create a little gauntlet for you and your friends to play on a Friday night when you're bored. Like it's a, it's a great shout, and you wouldn't believe how many people like even in your outside friend groups that have never like played Pokemon to your knowledge before might have some knowledge on these cards as well. So. Always cool. Uh, all right, let's move on. So our next honorable mention is actually really, really interesting. Matt and I had this on our top five. And, like, this is uh, the only reason we didn't put it on our top five is because it's so recent, so everyone already kind of knows about it. Um, but surprisingly, Battle Styles to Paradox Rift. Uh, our recent format uh, up until about uh, three months ago. Honestly, like, awesome format. I don't know. It, it might be one of those things where we maybe didn't appreciate it as much as we should have at the time. Um, but it was a very, very well-balanced format. In my opinion, it had a great combo of... Uh, it, it was a little bit, control was a little bit underpowered at that point, but you had a little bit of control, you had a little bit of beat, big, like, beat stick decks, you had a bit of evolving decks, like slow stuff like Gardevoir, uh, Charizard was starting to peek its head out, you could argue that the S tier was always Gardevoir, but people didn't play it as such, like, they didn't see the play rates, and, like, there's so many different pieces with that format that I really enjoyed, and, and, and for me, at least, playing Modern Pokemon, I've said it a few times, like, that was the most fun I've had, uh, in a long time, playing at tournaments with, with, uh, that format so ldf will give it off to you to start uh what are your thoughts on that one yeah paradox rift is the most recent format i think we have in this video and i do think that it is without a doubt my favorite format of the modern era 
um, in probably post COVID, to be honest with you, there's like the formats post COVID all always have been kind of hit or miss. I know a lot of people do not like some of the other formats we've had, but Paradox Rift was a great meta where not only was it like it was a little too long, and maybe that's the only negative about it. It lasted for so long. But it was a format that had a lot of diversity. It all, it almost felt like if you wanted to go to a regional with whatever deck, you could have just played whatever and you maybe could have done well with it. I mean, we we saw the big basic heavy decks like Roaring Moon and Maridon. We had the more, you know, skill intensive uh, decks that required a lot more sequencing like Lost Box and Gardevoir. You had like the big big decks like Charizard, Lost Tina was good. Even Snorlax was doing pretty good. I think it won a regional, obviously got second in Vancouver. So there was like a bit of stall. There was like a good mix of everything it felt like. And it, it did feel like it was a great format. It did last a little too long. That might have been the only issue with it. Um, but it did feel like there was a lot of variety in the format. Um, even like some of the more like fun off meta stuff like Goldengo, for example, one of my favorite decks from that meta. Um, that was a fun one. Um, and there's obviously like Zoro Box existed as like a fun little meme deck. So the, the format just had so many, so many different decks you can play. There's Rapid Strike, another big one that I forgot about. There's just, yeah, good variety of decks. And I mean, there definitely were like what you could argue there always was like at least a best deck in format at the time. Like it was either going from like Charizard to Tina to Gardevoir. But it didn't make the meta like warp around it kind of like we were with like Lugia format and even this meta with uh, Charizard. Kieran, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if yeah, if I had to pick my favorite post COVID format, it's definitely that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, I did quite well in this format, so I'm a little you biased did, as yeah. well. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think what Matt said is right. Like, there was tons of viable decks, like, which is, I think, to me, like a sign of a healthy format. Uh, there was no clear best deck in format, which I think is really nice. Uh, like Matt said, kind of, I, th I do think Gardevoir was the best deck, but it kind of got held back by like the time restrictions of the format. Um, but yeah, it seemed like every week, it, like a new deck was winning. We had like um, Maridon one, then it was like. I think Charizard won, and then it was, like, Giratina won, and then it was, like, Gardevoir won, and then we had, like, Pidgeot Snorlax Control, and then we had, like, Maridon win again, and, like, uh, mm -hmm. so it's just, like, it kept rotating, it's, like, it, all these decks took turns, which I think really, uh, like, symbolizes to me, like, how the format was, it was a great format. Uh, we even saw decks like Roaring Moon, like, halfway through the format start getting popular, so the format got explored further as we went on, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd really consider this like a retro because we literally played this a few months ago, but I do think yeah. <laughs> like if you go like five whatever years from now, if people start playing Scarlet and Violet like or like uh, what's the generation before this included in this is like this is the format Sword, I think. And, shield. Sword and Shield. They're, this is the one. Shield, gonna, yeah, yeah. This is the one they're going to pick. I think it's definitely the best mm -hmm. one that includes Sword and Shield cards. So. Yeah, the the only thing I'll say that I didn't like about the format, other than it being too long, there were problematic cards that existed. I think a lot of people weren't a big fan of cards like Iron Hands was a debatable one. Battle VIP was probably the biggest outlier in this meta. That was probably the one card that I think soured the format a little bit. So, I mean, if people go back, you know, five, six years from now and want to play this format again as a retro, you're going to get the Battle VIP experience. And that was maybe the only thing that held it back. Because it did feel like if your opponent got it two VIPs in their first turn, you got zero, you were at a massive disadvantage. But yeah. honestly, it's still just a fantastic format regardless of that. And that's just like a Pokemon problem overall too, right? Yeah. Like a lot of Pokemon. I saw something today about like this format that someone created about like just eliminating RNG. And maybe Kieran, you might know a little bit more about this, but there's a 60 card deck that someone created that basically eliminates all RNG from Pokemon and just is an entirely skill-based uh, 60 card mirror that you play against your friends. I'll link it in the comments. It's actually really, really cool. Um, and the guy who made it, I forget his name, but shout out to that guy. He basically was just mm -hmm. saying, I don't like that Pokemon is decided by who starts faster normally. And he created this like 60 card RNG list meta. So, uh, both players play the same 60 cards. Uh, it's really intricate. There's a lot of different cards, like four dittos. There's like a crowd on EX, like legend cards, like all over the place, but it is entirely skill intensive. So, huh. um, I'll link it below. You guys can take a look. Um, all right, so moving on. Um, this is uh, Kieran's in inclusion, his baby. Uh, Boundaries Cross for Roaring Skies is our third honorable mention. So as such, Kieran, take it away. Yeah, I won't spend a lot of time on this. This is just a personal favorite of mine. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if you want to yeah. like, kind of see what it is, like a format that has like, shame in the axe where every deck just does truly broken stuff, this is a great format. Uh, I think the reason I like this format is it's just like the, it's a crazy amount of deck diversity and strategy diversity. Um, so this year, like, Blastoise Keldeo won Worlds with Archie's Blastoise, a deck that people thought was, like, a Tier 3 deck, and it won Worlds, which I thought was really cool. Um, it just has some of my personal favorite cards. Like, it has a Crobat, uh, line that, like, when you evolve, then you put damage counters, which is one of my favorite cards ever. Um, like, one of my favorite decks ever, Raichu Crobat, the deck I played at Worlds that year is in this format. Uh, you had, like, the Primal Pokemon, like, Primal Groudon, Kyogre, which I thought was cool. And they had, like, the Ancient Traits, which is one of my favorite mechanics in the TCG that I wish they'd bring back. 
you had like ancient treasure sick yeah you had like metal decks that like had like uh it's kind of like malamar's ability or flappy's ability it was good you had like item lock on seismitoad ex but it wasn't it was like tier one but it wasn't like truly broken iteration of seismitoad uh it felt like balanced you had night march in its infancy before like the deck became turbo broken uh i don't know it's just there's like so many really cool decks i just really like playing this format um and it is kind of fast with like shaman and all that but uh, it's one I personally really enjoy. Uh, but yeah, we don't spend a lot of time on it, but I just wanted to give it a shout out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's also relatively cheap. Uh, oh, those, super like, cheap. Mid, mm-hmm. Very yeah, cheap, Mid-2010 yeah. decks are really, really cheap, like 2015, 2016, 2017. That's when like the second boom of Pokemon kind of happened and they started printing like crazy amounts of cards. So yes. very accessible if you want to try it out. It's a good intro one. Um, all right, on to our top five, and this is where it's going to get juicy. So <laughs> we're gonna, let's go, baby. We're going to start. This hat is so uncomfortable, Doug. I can't get over <laughs> this. Um, <laughs> we're going to start at number five with uh, Sun and Moon to Lost Thunder. So this is a 2018 format. Um, this was on, uh, I think, all three of our lists. We all really mm-hmm. enjoyed this format. Um, so LDF, why don't you start us off? Yeah, the Sun and Moon to Lost Thunder format was really nice because it was arguably like the the prime format for what we saw with Zoroark. We saw big decks like Buzzrock do well. Um, Buzz will obviously be in a big deck. There was also Malamar, which was another like very big deck at the time. Um, it was just a good format. It was before tag teams came out, so it was mostly like two prize focused. There were like the big basics, obviously, like the Buzz Rocks and stuff, but it wasn't as like it wasn't as bad as it would get when we got into like Unbroken Bonds and you know Fine Minds and whatnot. Uh, but it's a very nostalgic format. A lot of people look back on the early Sun and Moon era very fondly, and also they look back at the mid to late Sun and Moon era very fondly, too, before tag teams. And I think this is, like, one of the best formats that a lot of people look back on. The other format that we were thinking of was the uh, the team-up format. It's in the format right after Sun and Moon to team-up. We were thinking about that format, too. Uh, Mean and Neil, I think, had that on our uh, top five list because that was another good one. We did have tag teams. Pikaram was a deck, but it wasn't like the best deck in the format. There was like Zap Beast, which was good. Um, Stuff like uh, Celesaur saw a little bit of play. Um, Pikaram, it was good, but it wasn't like super, super good yet. Um, And obviously, we didn't have like Reshi's Art and Welder yet. So the meta was just, it was still like a pretty good mix of uh, different decks. And like Zapdos was like one of the best decks. So we had like a single prize deck be one of the top decks in the format at the time, which was really cool when all these big two prize decks were like dominating and whatnot. But uh, yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. I think to me, the Sun and Moon era, to me, it's the last era that I can remember of Pokemon where like most decks didn't one shot each other. uh, Yeah. Which is why I personally really enjoy playing the Sun and Moon era. Uh, formats i think this my one or I'll, I'll start with what's good actually first i think the one thing that's good about this again there's lots of deck diversity i think there's lots of skill in this format um there's lots of cards that like place damage counters like our Rangaroo is like a big part of the format where it's like you have to manage resources um like there's lots of evolving decks which i personally love i think pokemon is more fun when you're evolving um like i think the most popular deck back then was like a zoroark decidueye little and nine tails deck so you were literally playing like all these different evolutions together which i thought was really awesome yeah um you had cards like ace arola which would like really prolong the game since you had like a really strong heal it was basically like penny for everything and you keep the card it was a like scoop up cyclone as a supporter yeah it was an insane card yeah, for which zork is, which is really awesome you had really unique decks that were fun like there was a grand bull deck where like you had to have no cards in your hand to attack so i just thought the design was really cool and to me i think my my personal pick for like the best design card ever ditto prism stars in this format and Ditto, Such a good card. Ditto Prism Star's ability was it can evolve into any stage one. So you'd always, you would see people like they would play stage ones in their deck without playing the basic as like a tech because they could play Ditto. And if you play a matchup where you don't need that stage one tech, you can just evolve Ditto to like your main, your main Pokemon. Um, and for decks like Zorak, for example, like the Zorak Decidueye deck, it's like that Ditto can become a Zorak. It can become, uh, what's it called? Dartrix can become like a little Ninetales. It was just really cool to have that type of flexibility in the format. And I, I genuinely think Ditto Prism Star makes this such a great format. My one criticism yeah. of the format, I think it's something that we didn't realize at the time, but now when you go back and you play this format, is Orangaroo is actually a little too strong in this format. Um, so the, the Orangaroo's attack was put three cards from your discard into your bottom of your deck. Um, it really stifles a lot of like control type strategies. It also makes control itself really good. Like there's a Zora control deck where you just play a bunch of disruption in Orangaroo. So I think at the time, like even like the year after, like it took a while for people to catch on to how good Orangaroo was. Uh, and I think if you go back, almost every deck should play Orangaroo now. Um, and just want to give a shout out. The other reason I like this format is one of my favorite decks ever. The Tapu Koko spread deck uh, is in this yeah. format. And it feels yep. like spread hasn't been a really viable strategy in a long time. Like its attack was literally just do 20 to everything. And like that seems really slow, but back then it was enough. Uh, so yeah, that was one of my favorite decks ever too. So I personally really enjoy playing this format. 
Yeah, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to highlight some of the decks here that were big. Also, um, if you go to the the Roanoke tournament here, you saw Jimmy Pendarvis won with a really cool like stage two toolbox deck. He had the Alola Nine Tails GX. When you evolve it, you get like two items out of your deck. It had Swampert in the deck. Um, it had Gardevoir GX. It had a one one Sogaleo. It used the uh, Prism Star Ace, uh, the Prism Star Super Boost Energy. Um, which when you had like a bunch of stage twos in play, it provided four rainbow energy on a stage two. It was an insane card. So that was like a really cool highlight deck. I think there was like, I think Shintaro did really good with this really creative, like Greninja GX Swampert Meganium deck that just played super boost energy as the only energy in the deck. I forget how good he did, but I remember he did really good at like a tournament with that deck and it just like blew up, um, it was like a really, really cool thing. But yeah, this format's really, really good. A lot of different decks, you like Kieran said, a lot of evolving decks, and there was a good mix of some more like big basics. Like Bilcephalon was popular. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also you had like Buzzwolf still around in the meta, but it yeah. was very good. But even like those decks yeah. like like Buzzwolf or not Buzzwolf, uh, Blacephalon, like it still played like a stage one like support, which I think is really yeah. cool. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, I love that format, and honestly, this format's really accessible now too. All the decks I was just checking Limitless, all the decks are about forty bucks. Like you yep. can literally build any deck for about forty bucks, so it's pretty mm-hmm. cool if you have some old cards laying around. Like maybe build, I don't know, three four decks from this era, see if you like it, and then you can round out your cube there. Like, um, I think there's a lot of potential for for building some of these old decks, especially in the mid twenty tens right now. Like, obviously, like some of the higher up uh, numbers on our list, so like. I don't want to spoil anything, but some of these retro formats have gotten very, very expensive. Yeah. And this is not mm-hmm. one of those that uh, that have really eclipsed that yet. My biggest thing with this format that I really liked as well, I agree with Kieran, is the evolution factor. I love the fact that you're evolving. Games are kind of slow. Um, you're two-shotting basically everything. The only time I can remember of like a, a format this slow was like when Brilliant Stars first came out, when uh, it was like Arc Intel on Arc Intel everywhere. And yeah. everything was like a two-shot with Sharons and stuff. And, and that maybe isn't the best representation because that format is nothing like this format. But that's the last time I remember Pokemon being that slow. So it's fun to kind of... It's got a blend of both. Like you have Blacephalon blowing up everything, but then you have Zorark two-shotting. You have Decidueye putting 20 damage. Like there's... There's a lot of things going on with the format, and I, I really enjoyed it as well. So, yeah, great one to, to check out. Actually, Matt, when you mentioned that Shintaro deck, I forgot about Meganium. That's, like, uh, it's one card I wish was better. Like, it has <laughs> such a cool ability. Um, mm-hmm. Its ability is like rare candy. So, it's like if you have Meganium in play, if you have a basic in play, you can just evolve it to its stage two, even if you put it into play right away. Uh, which was like such a sick ability. It was just a little too yeah. slow because you had to like evolve to Meganium first, then you had to evolve to your other guys. But yeah, that's a card I wish. Uh, was better because i think that is actually one of the coolest abilities they've ever put on a card it's very cool another thing i wanted to mention um was uh never mind never mind i thought i was thinking something with like gust or whatever but i was thinking of the 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 format before like when guzma left and we had just a mm. uh, custom catcher but that was not this format no, so this next year yeah 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 i was if just double checking to make sure if it was right or not so, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm glad it wasn't this <laughs> format <laughs> <laughs> all right so at uh, number four, we have uh, Primal Clash to Guardians Rising, which is a 2017 format. This was uh, immensely popular amongst my two co-hosts over here. Not so much with myself as I didn't <laughs> play during this era. But, uh, yeah, it, it seems like looking back on it, it, it does seem like I can understand the balance and the appeal of it. I know a lot of people do uh, do build this format in a, like even today. So, very, very interesting. Kieran, why don't you start us off with it? Yeah, I mean, it's actually like kind of bad that we put these back-to-back because they're very similar. <laughs> they're like a year and a half yeah. apart. Uh, but yeah, this is like the format, um, with all, it's kind of similar. There's like a lot of evolution decks. This is the NAIC 2017 format. If anyone wants to look at a big tournament, we had this format. Um, it was just another format with like a lot of great diversity. And I just thought a lot of really well-designed cards. So this is the set where like Garbodor from Guardians Rising came out. Uh, I think it has one of the more unique attacks. Like I think we've ever seen. Um, so it's attack was 20 damage for each item card in your opponent's discard. And I thought the card like kind of like warps the format a little bit. Uh, you really have to play around this card like you have to be like you can't just like burn items like all the time you can't just sometimes you don't want to preemptively thin your deck uh so i just thought it added a really cool element to the game i'd say maybe about like 25 30 percent decks played this card i thought it was a really cool element to the game uh that we hadn't really seen before and we haven't really seen an attack that punishes playing items like i think ever since since this one Uh, so i thought that card is really awesome for this format um, and then again, and there's just really great deck diversity. Like I'm just looking at the top eight of that IC and, it, and there's like only one deck that's like repeated, uh, which I think really shows how good it was. Um, then there's also really fun, like tier two decks in this format. Uh, like I played one of them at this tournament. I got top 64 with like a mega Gardevoir deck that like you discarded your bench Pokemon to like do extra damage. Like 
it just feels like the sun and moon era just had so much creativity with like the cards they designed and i, I feel like we haven't gotten back to that um and i just really enjoy that i think it's like similar where it's like this is a slower grindy format resources resource management matters more than it has like in the modern era uh and yeah like evolution which is like such a core mechanic of the game so that's personally what i really enjoy playing this format matt maybe you can give your thoughts yeah yeah so it's kind of funny we talk about the neic i <laughs> guess who won that tournament <laughs> Tord Rec Tord Rec yeah. Oh, what a goat. <laughs> but yeah, no, this format is arguably the one of the most nostalgic formats that I think we've had in the modern era. I remember when we were in the thick of the VMAX tag team format. I remember a lot of YouTubers um, and a lot of content creators, even players, were talking about how the game was not very fun during like the pandemic era. And then when you look back, they were like comparing it to the sun and moon era. Like I think Celio's Network has done a couple like video documentaries talking about that. And uh, this was kind of like this format was like the example we were said everyone was talking about for like this was a very good format. It was a very healthy format, especially, you know, Garbodor existing, punishing players for overextending items because this format did have a lot of really strong items in it. So having that like counter check balance with Garbodor is really nice. And there was a good variety of decks. I mean, looking at NAIC, you have Drampagarb, Desi Plume, which maybe was like the only problematic deck yeah. was like the fact that Force Giant Plants existed with Vile Plume. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, like it was still fine. You had Alola Ninetales to Stigui, Alola Ninetales by itself. You had Volcanion. You had um, the Breakthrough Zork or Breakpoint Zork. Was, I think yeah. it was Breakthrough Zork. It was a Zork with Mind Jack and Stand in. It had the ability where you could move it to the active. Um, from the bench, and then it also did more damage to each your opponent's bench Pokemon. It was a very strong card back in the day. And then if everyone came and forget about this one. Greninja, one of the most iconic stage 2 decks of all time. Greninja was really good this format. Um, Vikabulu, another big one from this format, which is similar to uh, uh, not Shen Pao, but there's a, there's a deck that I was thinking of, but... Yeah, the energy yeah, there's, there's... from the deck instead of the hand for that one. Yeah. I don't think there's another yeah. ability. Mm-hmm. I, I swear recently, though, I've heard someone talk about, like, the comparison of Vika Bulu to, like, a, a deck in the modern day. But I, I can't remember. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a good format. There was, like, Darkrai. Darkrai EX existed. Um, yeah, there's a good variety of decks. And like, like you said before with the Garbodor, Garbodor was a very good counter check to the format. It was very popular, like you did say, though. It was a very popular card um, that everyone played. And there were two different versions of it that were very popular. You had the Drampa build, which I think was the better of the two. But then you had Espeon Garb, which was also very, very good. And, uh, yeah, one of my favorite formats of all time. I remember, like, doing YouTube during this time, making content during this era. Very good time. Um, like, YouTube was way different back then, too. That whole, like, the YouTube scene in the PDCGO was so much different than it is now. And whenever I get nostalgic for that, like, mid-2010s, like, Pokemon YouTube, I always think back to the to this, like, time. Yeah, I think one, yeah. Uh, one funny thing I want to point out is, so, our first regionals in that format was in Seattle. Uh, and Drampagarb took 17 of the 32 spots. Cause mm. I, people were not ready for how good of a card Garbodor was. Uh, and I think it was something like 20, I'm just looking here, it was like 21 of the 32 or 23 of the 32, like, played Garbodor in their deck. So this, this tournament, I remember, it let everyone know, like, okay, Garbodor is, like, a serious card, like, you could not disrespect it. And then as we moved towards, like, the tournaments, like, later on in the format, you could see people stopped playing so many items in their deck. They started upping supporter counts, like, Pokemon counts, energy counts. Uh, so I thought it was really cool, like, in real time, how you could see, like, it wasn't like the Lugia format where it's, like, one deck dominated and it stayed dominating. It's, like, no, a deck dominated, mm -hmm. and then there was a huge shift to, like, how you approach the game, deck building, and how you play. So, uh, yeah, I really, really love this format. I think it's really awesome. Um, and to me, this is probably my favorite modern format, uh, when I say, like, in the modern era, like, the Day 2 IC era of Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, man. Like, I look back on it, and I see this format, and, like, I obviously didn't play at the time, so I didn't really know too much about it, but I look back on it, and I can see how fun it can be. Like, it looks like yeah. there's a lot of different things going on, a lot of... I wish someone would build it so I could play the damn format, but hey, you know, <laughs> such is life. Um, it looks like there's a lot of different, like, things going on. Like, it's not, like, a very linear, like, you're just blowing everything up kind of format. Like, you have to think about a lot of things. Like, you mentioned with, Gar uh, with Garbodor, you played your, your Gardevoir, there was uh, Pikabulu, or, sorry, Pikabulu, like, all these different different strategies that were going on and Drampagarb and Espigarb and Volcanion and Greninja. And it's just like, the list goes on and on and on. And I'm looking at it, looking at these results and this is as diverse of a meta as I think I've seen as far as like, um, the modern Pokemon student goes like at least this 20, uh, 2017 NAIC goes. So 
really interesting. I like it. Uh, definitely going to try it out. And uh, I am one of the listeners for this one because I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I, I like rage quit Pokemon after like X and Y EXs. I'm like, I hate this game. Uh, <laughs> I that came gave back too much GX trauma. And I loved it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, as soon as Pokemon started evolving again to be two prizes, I'm like, yo, I'm so back. Actually, yeah, All that's right. one thing I wanted to say before we moved on. Um, mm -hmm. So when we were thinking about like how the, the, the three prize mechanic was ruining the game, we were in the thick of like VMAXs and ADP and it was just not a very like skill intensive format. Um, I feel like Pokemon really listened to everyone's opinion and, you know, really just were like, okay, the players want this more slower evolving style of Pokemon back, but they also kept it with a good mix of two prizers. And that's kind of where we're at now with the EXs returning to the game. There's all the big basics. And then there's also the big evolving decks that we have nowadays, like Gardevoir and Charizard. And we're about to get Dragapult. So it is really cool to see Pokemon. I think really Pokemon's inspiration for the Scarlet and Violet era has been from this era specifically. We're just missing, like, maybe a Garbodor-type card, but yeah. I do think this is similar. Yeah, I kind of agree. I think i said this, like, a million times this podcast. Like, my biggest problem with the game is just, like, how reliant it is on one-shots still. Like, when you go back and play these formats, it's really cool because, like, you can't just one-shot everything. Like, you have to grind for your mm -hmm. knockouts. Like, there's this healing. But now it just feels like most decks are just like, all right, like, find a way to do big damage and blow things up. And the cool, yeah. like, the cool games in the format are, like, stuff like Charizard Mirror, where it's, like, slow, it's intricate, you have to damage stuff, like, play Devo. Uh, and it just felt like some of these older formats, like every game was kind of like that, which I thought was awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, it feels like Pokemon since uh, at least since 2014, it's just gone through cycles. It, it feels yeah. cyclical. Like, all right, we have a big one shot format, then we have a two shot format. And like recently, it's been really, really good, thankfully. But I mean, you look at tag teams and then ADP came out and then it slowed down a little bit. So early Sword and Shield and then VMAX is and new VMAX is down your throat turn too. So it's like, yeah. it's a, it's a big blend. So I, I'm interested to see, like, it's a good point Matt made because I'm interested to see if this cycle continues. Like has Pokemon yeah. kind of learned that this balance is good, which I think we all agree. I think the balance is good right now. You Very have good, yeah. something for everyone. Um, or are they going to go and kind of revert back to gatekeeping, single prizes, stuff like that? And to be honest, in my mind, Dragapult's not a step in the right direction, but that's a, a top. <laughs> no, it's definitely day. not, no. <laughs> 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 All right, on to number three. Uh, we have Heart Gold to Noble Victories. This is a format in 2011. Uh, really interesting format, a lot of diversity. Yep. Um, the, the last time I remembered a really good mill deck was in this format, and I could be wrong, I might be missing one. Um, but this was the probably the best mill deck I think we've ever seen, uh, yeah. other than Flygon Palkia maybe. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Durant was really really good. So Durant was a was an awesome deck. There was a lot of cool primes. This this was uh, this signified one of the big booms of Pokemon when Heart when uh, Heart Gold came out and then when Black and White came out. Both of those times are two huge booms. A in the competitive scene and B in the casual scene. So there's a lot of new players. A lot of new things and i think a lot of players now that look back on that time associated with a lot of like early player nostalgia and a lot of cool things that they kind of went through as a player when they first started so i also kind of have like that nostalgia i know you guys do as, as well like we kind of all met during that time so this is a big time for the game in general uh and it's a good time to look back on and actually a very expensive format to build nowadays and i was just looking into it it's it? uh pretty expensive yeah it is well, the primes yeah it is oh the primes are expensive okay Yep. Yeah. Yep. A place out of Typhlosion is about 110 US dollars now. Damn. So good thing that deck's uh, tier two. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Times have changed, my friend. All right, Kieran, start us off. Yeah, I mean, for me, this format is it's a fun format, but it's also nostalgic for me. This was my first ever like really competitive format when I started playing the game, so I'm always gonna have fond memories of it. Uh, I played this deck. It's called Dawn Fan Dragons. Uh, so there was a Dawn Ooh, Fan. Yeah. It was one energy, do 60, do 10 to your entire bench. So like, it seems pretty bad. Uh, but you would play these, like, the, the dragon Pokemon, like Kiram, Zekrom, and Reshiram, and their attacks were outraged. The more damage they had, the more damage they'd do. And then you would try and hit decks for weakness. Um, I just remember my deck was so bad, because, like, I just built it on my own. Like, I didn't, like, copy someone's list. Like, I was playing cards, like, Potion in there. Like, I didn't own, like, enough <laughs> Junk Arms or even, like, Junipers, which is, like, research. So it was just a really bad deck. But I used to have so much fun, I remember, in this format. Um, and the best deck, or at the time, was this Magnezone deck that was weak to fighting. So, like, that's why I would sometimes have success with my deck. So, I think similar to what we've been, like, just harping on this whole time is that there's lots of, like, deck diversity and there's lots of evolution in this format. And even the decks that are, like, big basic-y, like, they still include some type of, like, evolution support. Um, I think it's just something I've been thinking about as we've been doing this episode. It just, like, feels like the deck strategies, attacks, abilities, like, they used to be, like, just way cooler back in the day. Like... There's a deck here, where, like it was like with Electrode Prime. It's like you would knock yourself out, give your opponent a prize, look at like the top seven cards, and like put all the energies you get onto your Pokemon. And you could like play like Rainbow Energy and like play all these attackers. Like the retroactively looking at it, the best deck is like the Chandler deck, 
Um, and like some builds wouldn't even play energy. Like you would literally just, its ability is put three damage counters any way you like on your opponent's board. And you would just switch back and forth and you'd have an item lock Pokemon and you'd try like trap stuff in the active. Uh, so that was just like a really cool deck. Um, that one's expensive to make because you need Tropical Beach. So that one you're definitely proxying. Mm. Like Anil said, <laughs> and we promo had... Promo Litwick. And Promo Litwick, which is another expensive card. And Neil said, true. Durant, like that was our last true mill deck, I think, besides actually Great Tusk is probably the last. Actually, we had another Durant come out a couple years ago, but it wasn't tier one. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the last tier Durant one. Durant walked so that Great Tusk could run. Exactly. This is the last tier one mill deck. So we had a mill deck in the format where it was like, it didn't even feel, it was annoying to play against, but it wasn't like unhealthy or anything. It was just like, a, it forced you to play a different type of game. Like you had to actually really manage your resources. You had the prize map. You had to like limit your bench. Um, I don't know. It's just to me, it was like, it's just another era of the game where it's like, um all the decks are just super cool how uh, they evolve the one problem with this format is there's no restriction for going first so if you go first you can like support or you can attach <laughs> you can attack so that is a little unbalanced but uh no it's just like deck diversity is really awesome and i think the heart gold cards are like the most aesthetically pleasing cards too so it's a really nice i format. agree yeah, yeah i'm glad you brought that up yeah that this is a, yeah, yeah i was gonna say this is definitely a format for me that's also super nostalgic i do remember playing back in the day and playing in this meta before we got ex pokemon this was literally the last format until like mewtwo came out for anyone wondering and some of my favorite decks of all time are in this format two of my favorite decks are the um the cake deck where uh kieran was talking about the electrode prime where you would knock itself out and you would just build up these like really crazy attackers like glaciate kieran that did 30 damage to all your opponent's pokemon there wasn't bench barrier back then i think and then you had the cobalion that did 80 damage and then your opponent's active couldn't attack it was just a really cool deck i'm a big fan of those like toolbox decks and another one of my all-time favorites was the vvv deck the vanilla yeah. vile plume mm. victini deck all-time classic right yeah. there i actually the best part about this format for me anyways was Back on PDCGO, when Legacy existed, these decks that I played, like, I did a video on Cake and VVV specifically. Like, they were not that good in, like, the Legacy format specifically, because, you know, EX's route, there was, like, different cards, like Keldeo EX existed. But the fact that I was able to play these decks again, actually, like, play very similar 60s to them, and kind of more modernize them with some of the other Legacy cards, was really, really cool. And it was actually, like, very, very nostalgic. I did a video um, right before PDCGO shut down with Chainer Chip. Uh, Chip Ritchie, where we both like just did like a conquest and legacy, and I think I brought, I th I might have, I think I brought the Vanellix Vile Plume Victini deck against him, and I was like, dude, I'm gonna miss this deck, man. This deck is sick, like very cool format. There were big basics, like obviously you had stuff like Reshi Ram and Zekrom, which were very very powerful cards, and then you had like the uh, the Cake deck, like big basics did exist, but it wasn't like it was nowadays, where like it it was super like boom boom big one shots all over the place there were more slow methodical decks like durant the chandelure deck existed um yeah very good format highly recommend anybody to play this format if you could ever afford it definitely play it because it's so fun yeah 100%. yeah there are uh low rarity versions of all these as well uh mm -hmm. i know like the full arts are very expensive but at this point there were no like real ultra rares uh other than primes so yeah if you can proxy the primes like like just, our, i think our main message from all three was is just give these decks a try uh like proxy them do whatever play them online give them a try try these old formats and i find like i can personally attest to this playing old format makes me better modern as well because when you're playing old format you're thinking a lot more you're doing a lot more and you can kind of see how the game's evolved and you can kind of see why the old heads are the old heads so to speak uh when you go back and play you're gonna be talking to your friends like you're the old head like hey come play this format with me that i played in 2010 so it's pretty fun uh this is definitely up there for me as well i think this one's a good blend of uh skill and and big basics like i think it's kind of that sweet spot yep. um Reminds me a lot of, uh, of mo like, not modern-day Pokemon, maybe Pokemon a year ago, where there was a lot of different parts moving around. But I think, like, abilities today are as cool as they were before, but they're not viable. That's the problem. Yeah. They're not as viable as they were before. Like, Electrode mm -hmm. was viable. Victini was, like, the most joked card. Uh, <laughs> Vileplume had a, a insane effect. Like, there's Vileplume, so many yeah, cards. One of the best cards ever, 100%. Yeah. There's so many cards that could have, uh, that might have abilities reprinted that'll never see the light of day. So, yeah. And that's uh, another thing to, to point out there. Moving on. So, we're getting up to the top two here. And this is a really popular one. Most of you have probably heard about this in uh, in the last week or so. And we, we thought about this was never an official sanctioned uh, Pokemon format. It was in Japan, according to Kieran, but never in uh, never North America. This is uh, Ruby and Sapphire to Power Keepers. So, this spans between 2003 to 2007. And encompasses all the decks of the EX era, which I believe, or all the sets, sorry, which mm -hmm. I believe are 16 sets. So 
huge diverse card pool uh really really interesting how some of these these things interact some of these cards uh there's a lot of moving parts uh really long games as well um and you can kind of see how if you play all the world formats between those years how this one kind of encompasses all of them so uh kieran why don't you start us off give us a little bit of a breakdown of roaring, uh i almost said roaring skies that's <laughs> <Blue Jean> sapphire <laughs> yeah uh yeah so i mean like this is my favorite format i put this as my number one um i didn't even play pokemon back during the ex era but that's how much i love this i came to love this format uh i really started playing it during the pandemic um i didn't enjoy whatever modern pokemon was like many players did uh so i started going on tcg1 just like playing this a bunch um so to me my favorite parts of formats are probably like deck diversity where i can play a bunch of different decks and like this format has like insane deck diversity because you're playing a whole block um, I was just on like Jason's blog before this episode and he has like 55 decks he has from this format mm -hmm. like on his blog I saw that too which is like Jeez. insane right like yeah. um and I just think it's really cool I think like EXs back then like they weren't as overpowered or overtuned as they are now like they were actually very very balanced like a basic EX would have like 80 or 90 health and like a stage two that wasn't EX would have like 120 130 like uh so they were definitely like very in tune uh which I really like um Again, this is a really slow format. Games are really long. Like, you can use setup attacks at the start of the game. Um, there's just really, really cool cards. When, if you watch our top 10 cards of all time video, we had, like, talked about the Hall and Cast Form, for example. Like, they had Pokemon that became energies. Cast Form had an attack to lead draw cards. Like, that's a common thing in this format. Uh, and there's so much counterplay in this format. Like, there's lots of cards that are, like, stadiums, for example, that, like, specifically say, like, block abilities from, like, these type of Pokemon. There's like Lunatone and Solrock, you put them together and you can like block abilities from certain type of Pokemon. Because uh, there's one card, Pidgeot, it's actually the same as Pidgeot EX, but just not a two-prizer, where it's like, it's one of the main Pokemon in the, the game, where it's like search your deck for any card. So you either play it or you would counter it, which I thought was really cool. Um, and yeah, just like they're really fun, the decks. Like, I just love them. Like, um, there's just so much diversity. Like, they have, similar to what I said with the Electrode Prime, there's like an Electrode EX that has a similar ability where you get the energy from your discard. There's lots of comeback in this format. There's a really iconic card called the Pow Hand Extension, where its boss is an item if you're losing. It's Counter Catcher, actually. The other effect is mm. you can move an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another, so it introduces a control aspect. Um, there was something called like, the Holon Engine, which was really awesome. So the Holon supporters were basically slightly nerfed normal supporters, uh, but you got to play this card called the Holon Transceiver, and the effect was like you can search your deck for a Holon supporter, or you can pick one from your discard and play it. So you got to add consistency to your deck, in exchange for having slightly weaker supporters than like the normal ones. Um, there was Rocket's Admin in this set, which is basically like Iono, or it's like N, like kind of similar to Iono, it's so you had yeah. that, which was awesome. You had an energy called Scramble Energy, which is just reversal energy, which the whole format kind of revolved around. Like you kind of like want to have your board set up before you take a prize because your opponent gets to have Scramble Energy. Um, there's like so many things to play around. There was so much deck diversity. Uh, it's just really, really fun. If I had to give one criticism of the format, it's like the best deck in the format. It's a deck called Railer, uh, where like <laughs> uh, Stantler's Insane attack name. is literally, it's actually, Lu <laughs> it's Luxray's attack, like Luxray V. It's like look at your opponent's hand and like discard a trainer. Um, and then there's a card called Cessation Crystal, which is probably the best tool of all time, where it's, if it's on your active, mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Pokemon don't get abilities. Um, so both your and your opponent. So you would just play like Stantler, you would lock abilities, and you would do its attacks called push away, and you would just discard their best card from their from their deck. From their and hand, windstorms sorry. most of the time. Yeah, and then there's a card called Windstorm, which is kinda of like Lost Vacuum. It's like Field Blower if you've played. It's discard yeah. two two <laughs> up to two uh, stadiums and tools. So you would every deck you kinda of want to play that so you can get rid of the cessation crystal. So yeah, Rayleigh, you would like run your opponent out of that, you would like item lock them. Um, and then there was like this like Rayquaza EX where you would just like its attack is literally just like snipe for like thirty, um, but you would literally like make give your opponent a bad hand like gust up something that's like has a heavier treat and you just snipe around their their board, um, and that deck's really unfun to play against. It's really annoying. There's actually a, I would imagine an RSPK <laughs> term on the weekend actually with a lot of big names. Tord Reklev actually won it ironically, uh, and he was mm -hmm. playing the Railer deck, mm -hmm. uh, which was really annoying. There's also Ford's on his control grind right now, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, he loves the control. There he so. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's also like a mine in, in that deck. Its attack is literally Regilecki's attack, where you get like a trainer from your discard into your hand. Um, but I mean, when I personally play this format, I don't play any of this nonsense. I play all the fun decks. Like, there's a Salad <laughs> CX deck I love to play. There's a Meta Knight deck where it's like, uh, what's called Metagross's, um, Metagross and Dragonite together. Like, Dragonite is like uh, Flaffy's ability, you get the energies, and then Meta Knight has like Chen Pao's attack. 
Um, and it's, it's abilities also, like, you can look at the top four cards of your deck and pick one. So, um, it's just really fun. Like, tons of evolution, like, tons of really neat mechanics. There's, like, the gold star Pokemon that all have really unique effects. You can only play one of them in your deck. Um... So this is the whole format I recommend most people try out. You can play it on TCG1 for free online. This format's way too expensive to casually build. Like, I don't have any of the decks built in real life. If I ever, like, won the lottery or something, like, this this is how, this is how you guys would know I won the lottery. If I start walking around yeah. with, like, RSPK decks. Because uh, they are expensive. But, yeah, I rambled for a lot. Mm-hmm. And, Neil, I know you play this format, too. So um, do you share my, yeah, my love yeah. for this format? I do share your love to this, for this format uh, to an extent, I think. Uh, I still prefer our number one a little bit more than this one, but I love it. It's definitely top two. Um, I have a few of the decks built, not fully, not non-proxied either. Like There are some proxies for some gold stars, stuff like that. Um, like Kieran said, good luck. Good luck building these properly if you want to. I think Celebrations <laughs> retwe- uh, reprinting Rockets Admin, Mew EX, Gardevoir EX did help a little bit. Um, does help bring the cost down a little bit. And you can kind of get these cards like off random people that are like really heavily played condition or whatever but you want to max rarity this thing you want to get it built out properly good luck have fun you gotta be like a millionaire uh, <laughs> yeah yeah the uh the suggestion of tcg1 i really like i think that's a good way to test these formats before you build them as well but i think the format is really really diverse and that's naturally what you're going to get when your format spans across four years so you do have a lot of different things going on and uh i i i want to re-emphasize your point about the ex's being balanced i think that's a huge part of this like yeah the EXs gave up two prizes. Like some of them had a hundred health, ninety health, eighty health, whatever. And, but it felt balanced. Like it felt like your stage two decks were still probably a little bit better if they got rolling. Um, but your EXs were good at any point in the game. So I really enjoyed this format. Uh, very skill intensive. Very counterplay inducing. You need to think about what am I doing? What can my opponent do? What am I doing to stop my opponent from doing that? Like, there's a lot of like intricate things you got to kind of go through, and there's a lot of different mechanics. I, I mean, you touched on a little bit with the Holland supporters, but there are Pokemon that turn into energies. There are Shockwave markers. There are like <laughs> Imprisoned <laughs> markers. Things you have never heard of in your life that you're gonna encounter uh, while playing this format. And I think that's the cool part about it, because like the possibilities really are endless with what you're gonna uh, what you're gonna discover with the 55 decks on Jason's page that we're gonna link below. That yeah. you're gonna build all 55. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I want, I want to say, as somebody like looking, somebody who's looking out or looking in through the outside, because I'm like looking at the tournament right now on Limitless, uh, looking at all the different decks. Yeah, Tord did win that tournament. Actually, if you, funny enough, if you want to see Tord and Jason actually play against each other, mm. the two goats, they actually have played before in these TCG1 tournaments. And I think they hit each other in this tournament. And yeah, Tord played that Stantler control deck with the, the Reggie Lecky Stantler Luxray Reggie Lecky like combo. Um, yeah, Tord seems to be in his control era right now because he played that Charizard Luxray deck to <laughs> freaking Stockholm too. So, but yeah, I'm like looking at the limitless uh, thing right now. There's so many different decks. I mean, you got the Stantler deck, Gardevoir, Raticate, Pidgeot. You got uh, Jason playing the Raichu Executor deck. There's a Sceptile deck, Espeon Bayonet, Swampert Metagross, Tyranitar Electrode, Muck Fortress. Just really cool stuff. Um, definitely something that maybe I'm going to look into. You know, it'd be really cool if like one day if Pokemon tcg online apps whatever had a very good big player base where they could actually have retro formats yeah. within that game like if the game's too small to do that but kind of like how we had legacy before if you want to play an old vintage format the option for that i really wish it was available on an online client because tcg1 is cool but it's nowhere near as like visually appealing as live or tcg were. and i feel like if i were to like make a video like playing in this tournament myself i would probably I don't know, like, it would just be, it wouldn't be as watchable because yeah. there's no animations or anything, right? So I, agree I think that would be the dream one day. Um, but yeah, really cool format. Like I said, I've never played it before, but I'm like looking at Limitless Page and stuff. And from what I've heard online and on Twitter and what you guys were talking about, it does look like a really funny, unique format with a ton of variety. Yeah, 100%. Uh, actually, one thing I was thinking about as we were talking about Sediment and you were talking about your PTCGO match with Chip or whatever, it's like, the mm-hmm. one really sad thing about live is like it took away like all the old cards, so you can't even play the old formats anymore. I know. Which was, like, really that's why we did that collab. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, why we did the collab. Is like these cards are gone, and we played like I I made sure to play like vintage stuff. I think I played like a, a modernized legacy version of like the truth in there. So maybe one day, like I yeah. said, if if the TCG ever becomes big enough, an online client that can actually you know get views would be really good to host these like type of tournaments with if they had old cards in that game i don't know if we'll ever get a like imagine having an online client with the entire card pool available to play you can just like select a different format before you like queue up a match and like you have like decks built in that it's just be so cool man 
Yeah, that's so I could be wrong about this, but I believe there are some licensing boundaries uh, to that, and that's part mm. of the reason why it doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, like just thinking logically, like Wizards of the Coast versus Nintendo, all that kind of stuff. Like I'm, I'm positive there's some sort of licensing boundary to this. Um, the one thing I will say is that the game is growing. Like the retro scene in general is growing. Like we've yeah. kind of been involved in it for a long time now. We saw it come up from grassroots, like being in Snowpoint Temple Facebook group with like, I don't know, like a hundred <laughs> people or whatever when it first started. So it is growing. Uh, I mean, even at this last, uh, this last regional at Indy, there was, uh, a, a, I think it was an RSPK tournament or something. There's some, sort there of was, yeah. So it is yeah, growing. I think Mahone won that one too. Movie. Did he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Yeah. I saw, <laughs> I saw a lot of people there that I haven't seen in years, uh, not physically just on the roster sheet, but there is a big, big population now that's growing yeah. of old players that just don't play modern and are just playing old. Yeah. And it's kind of cool to see Tord and Jason do it too. And I know they're boys, so it's kind of, it makes it even funnier. So it's, it'll, uh, it'll be uh, interesting cool. if we ever see Jason return to the TCG, like modern era. Like imagine Jason like pulls up the NEIC and plays like Dragapult or something. I, I don't know. That'd be really cool. Like I guarantee you, if Jason ever returned to the TCG, he would be the first game they would stream. He could be oh, 0 3 and they would still stream him. <laughs> it's, not, it's not out of the realm of possibility, dude. What's it called? I mean, uh, I've. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you go on. No, 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 you go, you oh, go, I was go. gonna say, I've I've seen some chatter online. Jason has been talking about like the modern stuff recently. Like I saw Tablemon said he ran into him on like live or something, um, and I've heard like he gave his opinions about the world's championship situation. Um, so I, I don't know. It's definitely interesting, but maybe Jason's looking to return one day. What's it called? Uh, if you actually want to play against Jason, I swear this guy like is never not on TCG one. Like every time I go on there, like the guy is just like playing a game, or like sometimes I'll like set up a game, he'll like play against me, he'll just join it. So if you want to okay. play against him, uh, yeah, just go on uh, online. And, like he literally is always in the chat. It's like so funny. Like this guy lives for like old school Pokemon. Uh, That's actually sick. quality testing. If you want to test against him, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. awesome. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's hit our number one here. Uh, so number one, as as most of you probably guessed at this point, is twenty ten, Diamond and Pearl to Heart Gold Silver Unleashed. Uh, a very nostalgic time for all of us. Um, this was my like first kind of entrance to the game was uh, two thousand eight two thousand nine. So really nostalgic to me. I find that the cards are the most aesthetically appealing ever in this format. Uh, you just look at them, you're like, I love these cards. Mm -hmm. um, Heart Gold, like Heart Gold in general, was absolutely unbelievable in terms of art, card art, stuff like that. Um, and when Hargold Soul Silver came out, it really unlocked and kind of perfected a lot of the Dominant Pearl era decks. Um, a lot of them were kind of missing one two, one piece or two pieces, and whether it's Pokemon Collector, or Double Colorless Energy, or whatever it was, like there's a lot of uh, a lot of input from the Hargold Soul Silver sets. Even though there's only two of them in this block, that really kind of pushed some sets, some decks over the edge, and also made it really balanced. Like mm -hmm. the um, the whole Dominant Pearl era was not perfect. There were some times where there were some cards that are maybe a bit too good and, and stuff like that, but Heart of Silver really uh, kind of rounded that out. And I'm a big fan of this format. This is my favorite format to play because it's, uh, you do have a great blend as well, and this is something that we constantly come back to, a great blend of big basics, attacking decks, and setup, slower kind of comeback decks. You have a great blend of it in this format, and I think this is the the format where you can see it the most um, with your Lux Chomps versus your Gardevoirs and the Alga Chomp and Gyarados, stuff like that. So, um, LDF, I'll hand it off to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on 2010? Yeah, 2010, very like very good format. This is when I like first started playing the game and really getting into it. There's some iconic cards that existed during this time, like the Machamp, the Takeout Machamp, my V-Star Marker that I yeah. still use to this Both day. Both V-Star Markers my... are still from this era, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah me and you got go. the, the two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Machamp, one of my favorite decks of all time, one of my favorite cards of all time. You had all these really cool stage two decks, like Kingdra existed. Uh, like you said, Lux Chomp was a thing. Uh, th just it's a great format. Like Gyarados exists, another one to name off. Like we were talking before, I think on the the greatest cards of all time. Like cards like that Dusknor were around and whatnot. So just it's a really cool format, and it is definitely like, in my opinion, like tier just S tier Pokemon gameplay. Like is this format might be a bit expensive to get into nowadays. Um, so if you were to try to build it, you know, probably not going to be very cheap, but. It's a very good format. If you can ever play this format, I highly recommend it. Because it is, like, we've talked about this before, how, like, at the time, everyone was like, Lux Chomps, BDIF. This is S-tier, you know, tier zero format deck. But then we look back, you know, the, the combo was like, is Lux Chomp really the best deck? Or was it as good as people said it was? And that's just really fascinating. And to me, that breeds that this format is 100% one of the best formats ever. Yeah, it's definitely the most, I don't, I'd say it's probably the most explored after the fact. Yeah. Uh, where there's been a lot of innovation mm -hmm. in it because of how much it is played. Um, yeah. yeah, this is like my second favorite format too. I love this one. 
Uh, it's similar to RSPK where there's just like tons of deck diversity. Like they, not all of them can like compete against the top decks, but like like we said with old format, you can play them against each other. Um, if you want more about this format, our guest last week, Curtis Lyon, he walked us through his yeah. 2010 world, so you can kind of hear like a, a history lesson of that. Uh, and I think also the, if I had to pick the most iconic finals match of worlds of all time, like this is definitely a contender. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Yuda top decks, like he had the top deck like one specific card out of like a twenty card deck. I think it was Luxray, right, wasn't it? It was it was Uxie level X, so he could he could uh, knock out like Gardevoir or something, and like he like rips mm-hmm. it, he, like slams it, and like, there was a very and the speech. picture of Pram's yeah. like he's like a photo. Yeah, I thought that was when he used a bright look or something, wasn't it on a Luxray? No, it was I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure he slammed at Uxie to knock out Pram's like Gardevoir or something. Yeah, the Maybe, iconic picture where he's like yeah. in the chair, like what the heck? Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's you, on Jason's site. Yeah, yeah when you edit it. this, like put that photo in. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Uh, I got you. Yeah, this is this is cool. Um, and it's again, like we've been saying, like the abilities were really really cool back then. Uh, like Gardevoir had the most broken ability, where it's like use your opponent's supporters. You had stuff like a uh, Dustnor level X. Doesn't see a lot of play, but it would like turn itself into a stadium. Like I don't know if Pokemon's ever done that before. That's uh, crazy. Uh, yeah. Oh, it, w- it was a bright look. I just looked it up. It was a bright look. It was a bright look. <laughs> I could have sworn Ooh. he had the. Oh, okay. If you look that. on, J- it's on Jason's thing. Okay, I'll, re- I'll read it after. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. good to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. the decks are just cool. Uh, the abilities are cool. Uh, there's cards like Dustnor in the format that like you have to play around. So like kind of how I was talking like Garbodor earlier for Guardians Rising. Like this is another card you have to play around in the format, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah, just lots of fun abilities. It's slow evolution. There are basic decks. There's uh, what's it called? The what's the hand trap card called for SP? Power spray. Uh, power spray. Power yeah. spray. So it's like that's a card that we've never seen again in the TCG. That's really cool. Like a trap mm-hmm. card. So um, yeah, no, awesome, awesome format. What I will say as well is it's actually not as expensive as it may seem to build this format. Yeah. Uh, it is possible. A lot of people have a lot of like LP, HP kind of played cards you can you can buy. And some of the decks are decently cheap, like surprisingly. Like I thought, okay. if you told me in 2010 the decks would still be this cheap, I wouldn't believe you. Like Luxray is, got reprinted, so that was a big game. Yeah, Luxray and, and Garchomp got reprinted, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was huge. And then you can find stuff everywhere. So I, like, hmm. I with the other boys, I really encourage you guys to, to try out this format. It, it, it's dope. Um the cards are cool. Build the decks out. See how they feel. Enjoy paying seven dollars for Pokemon Collector. Um, <laughs> but the but the stuff is fun. The stuff is really really fun. And I think there's a reason why it's number one for us. And and nostalgia is at play. But even people who play this format who never played in that era are like, okay, this is this is sick. There's a really good blend of stuff. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this list with you guys. I appreciate you guys uh, coming with your list as always. Um, let us know your thoughts below as well. What you guys think is maybe maybe we missed a format anything like that um and and build these things out really try them uh especially now there's a little bit of time before worlds uh after you get your invite or if you're done or you're not going for your invite whatever you got some time now this is a good time to get into some retro play some tournaments uh really explore what pokemon used to be and i guess sometimes we turn into a bit of a history channel but we love bringing this kind of content because this is what kind of hits home for us uh yeah i know we we've all taken breaks from modern pokemon at times because it just doesn't didn't hit right so yeah uh this is an awesome intro for for all of you and hopefully people get stuff out of this yeah so uh just before we go i want to say like if you want to like learn more so i think the jason's blog is probably like the best place to start uh yeah like when i'm bored like maybe like once a year i go and i just read through his blog it's a really (laughs) cool like he talks through the different tournaments of the game like how the formats evolved all the decks um which is awesome pdcg legends is really cool we've like always plugged that site like alex wilson he has um he has like every world's format on there like most regional is national so you can kind of go back and look at the decks that did well uh there's other websites like pdcg archive that have a lot of the decks and some of the alternative formats um there's like some youtube channels there's like snowpoint cast friends of the show canadian guys drew allen runs that one um so tons of resources we'll link them all below uh definitely like check it yeah. out if you're interested even if you don't want to play the formats like there it's just cool sometimes to go back and like read what the cards used to be like it's and, cool to learn yeah 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 no matter what you're trying to do it's always good to learn these things yeah it's kind of cool sometimes like you can like relate them to like modern decks you can kind of see how like concepts get recycled a lot in like the tcg because like, it's hard to constantly make like new effects um so you can mm-hmm. yeah of, yeah, you can kind of see like how like I don't know, like Chen Pao is a deck. Like you can trace its roots all the way back to base set, uh, which is like really cool. Yep, 
Yeah, I also will say it can make you better as well, like predicting new cards. So like when you see like a card reprinted, so heavily reprinted is the Roaring Sky or Roaring Skies. Wrong. I gotta stop saying that. Ruby <laughs> Sapphire to Power Keepers. Like within that block, EX cards are actually like, and I've looked back on yeah. this because I've been interested. They are the most heavily reprinted cards, most heavily printed effects. Uh, like the most recent example is Quick Search. Uh, they literally took a Pidgeot and made a new one. Yep. And when Pidgeot EX came out, immediately my first instinct was, oh damn, this is gonna be really really good. Right. So like having this past knowledge helps you kind of adapt to it in the future as well. And you can pick up things faster. Like if you see these things before, maybe you played a deck with a similar concept before, um, it helps you bring it up. And, and I really do think playing these formats really improve you as a player. So that's something to also think about. Um, LDF as always, man, thank you for coming on. Uh, we'll give you a second here to plug yourself. Not that anybody doesn't know you, but no, have fun no, with for it. sure. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for having me on again. Uh, one thing I did also want to mention too, uh, since when you're at some of these major tournaments, like NEIC or even, you know, the, the regionals, they do tend to do side events with some of these retro formats. Um, so if for whatever reason you ever get into any of these formats and you build a deck for yourself, like what your favorite deck in that format would be, sometimes it's nice to have that. Cause if there's ever a side event at a major tournament, sometimes you can playing it with your decks so i just wanted to mention that real quick too if you didn't want to just play only with your friends and online tcg1 you could also go to a regional sometimes and if they have a side event there sometimes you'll know ahead of time if they do it's a good time to get into it but yeah thanks for having me on once again i really like doing these top 10 top 5 videos with you guys really talking about the history of the game something that i'm just very fascinated and passionate about and uh yeah thanks for having me on again of course you can find me over on youtube at little dark fury uh twilight masquerade is coming out actually this episode goes out on wednesday right yep yeah so the set will already be live. By the time you're listening to this, I might have already been streaming or made a video on Twilight Masquerade. So if you want to get some Twilight Masquerade content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Nice. Better subscribe to our boy. We're going to find yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, also, please subscribe to us. We need it. Thanks. Yeah. We're almost at 1,000. <laughs> yeah. Close. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're getting there. A lot of our mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our viewers are are not subscribed, so and that's understandable. So yeah, make uh, sure to we subscribe. get there. We are doing. Yeah. Uh, Kieran and I are giving away another half a box of Temporal Forces packs, which we will get around to eventually. <laughs> We've been slacking on that for about mm -hmm. a week and a half, so we're gonna put it on Twitter. We'll, we'll have it out by the time this video goes live. I promise. That's our uh, that's our promise there. All you gotta do to enter: subscribe to us, follow us both, retweet it, follow Banana Games. Pretty easy, and then you'll have a free half a box if you're lucky and. Uh, Maybe you will get lucky, so we'll see. Uh, we will see you all after LA Regionals next week. Uh, if you're going, best of luck. Uh, last hurrah of Temporal Force is there, and uh, we'll have a recap most likely next Wednesday. And uh, look up to NAIC. We'll uh, gather some uh, gather some stuff because we don't know what's going on with the NAIC format yet. So uh, kind of all yeah. over the place. So. Yeah. We'll have some answers for you next week. Sweet. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Peace. Later. See ya.